Hello, all you wonderful Rocky Mountain Raptor Program supporters, followers, and fellow bird lovers. I am Jessica Miller. I am the Education and Outreach Coordinator here at the Rocky Mountain Raptor Program, and I invite you to join me on our first episode of Keeper's Log, a journey through this interesting time of COVID-19. Keeper's Log will take you behind the scenes and let you know what's going on here around the facility and what are we doing in our unique situation. It's an interesting time. It's a challenging time. And like many organizations, the Rocky Mountain Raptor Program is committed to ensuring we do our part to make sure that we help prevent the spread of this not so nice virus to our community, our volunteers, and to our staff. And so with that in mind, we have kind of a, a quiet facility right now. We are currently in the treatment room, which is the hub of our operations, usually a very bustling space with people crowded shoulder to shoulder, but you'll notice there's no one here. In the interest of public health and public safety, we have cut down to a bare minimum of volunteers and crew and staff here doing pretty much mission critical work. A lot of our outreach activities, well, all our outreach activities have been suspended for the time being, but we are still here doing the most important of the activities that we do, caring for our patients, our ambassadors, and being available for bird rescues any time that a raptor needs our help. So today we'll get a chance to take a look at how are we working here in this unique situation and check in on some of our ambassadors as we go through their care today. We've converted our classroom into workstations. As you can see, moved all the chairs aside, set up individual stations for each volunteer or staff member to work at for the day so that at the end of the day, they can disinfect that space and while working, be able to maintain a good distance from each other. All our supplies are out here, everything that we need to do our educational bird care and our rehabilitation team is instead working in the treatment room while our education care team works out here in the classroom. So this is our hospital enclosure. This is a transition sort of space where we, he's in the first one, where we house patients after they leave our critical care unit as they are stable and begin to improve. But um, right now we are actually having one of our ambassadors been staying in here for a couple of days our oldest ambassador, our turkey vulture. Um, turkey vultures are migratory and they actually head south for the winter. Here he is. This ambassador has been with us for 32 years. He is our oldest bird at more than 30 years old. We don't actually know how old he is. But turkey vultures, as I said, are migratory. And so they head south for the winter where there's better access to food and it's not so cold. But of course, with a fractured left wing, uh, he's not able to fly. And so in the winter, we move him into this small enclosure to help shelter him from storms like the one we just had over the past couple days. It would be amazing if we had a climate controlled indoor space to house him and we hope someday to be able to offer that, but right now we simply don't. So he's been in that smaller space for a couple of days, keeping warm and toasty from the cold weather. But now that it's bright and sunny again, he's gonna go back to his regular enclosure. Turkey vultures are one of my personal favorites. They're smart. They're playful, and as you watch, as he spreads those large wings out, those big black solar panels designed to capture the sun, warm him up, get the blood flowing, get the muscles moving. It's called a heraldic pose, and you'll often see turkey vultures do that. First thing in the morning when they wake up, 
trying to warm up from a chilly night. He loves the sun, he basks in it, and we always love to watch him enjoy his days.